Good morning. Welcome. Good to have you all here on this lovely morning. Uh, today, we will be hearing, of course, again from Jesus. And he is going to, well, he's going to teach us about what it is that we need most because we don't actually know. We don't know what it is that we need. Uh, and, uh, but he is gracious and merciful uh, and gives us, even when we do not know what it is that we need, he gives it to us. Uh, I'm just going to do one quick announcement. There are many in the bulletins, but uh, there's no why I'm a Lutheran study between services today. Uh, I will be teaching Sunday school instead, so can't be in two places, but we'll uh, resume next week. Next week is Reformation Sunday, so uh, I will uh, be, we'll resume the study at that time. Uh, with that, uh, I invite you, as you are able, to please rise uh, and join me on page 56 for our brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 385, What Wondrous Love Is This?
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, that we may obtain what you promise. Make us to love what you command through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as we hear our lessons today. First lesson is from Jeremiah 31, verses 7 through 9. For thus, for thus says the Lord, sing aloud, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. I see him going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. 
I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 126, and we will read it responsibly. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. For us, and we rejoiced. May those who sow in tears greet the with shouts of joy. those who grow up in the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The second lesson is from Hebrews 7, verses 23 and 38. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, and since he always lives, to make intercessions for them. For it was fitting that we should have such great high, such high priests, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Like, like the other high priest, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, word first for his own sins, and then for those in the people. As he, this he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints high priests, those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later, that the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Here in three. <coughs> of St. Mark, the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of mercy, uh, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What do you want me to do for you? It's quite the question, right? Jesus seems to open up the treasure chest and ask, what do you want me to do for you? Now, I don't know about you, but I have seen many uh, answers to this question. Have you ever watched a show where the genie comes out of the bottle and grants wishes? Uh, rarely does it go well. 
Uh, recently, I saw a meme on Facebook, and in honor of deer season starting soon, I'll share it with you. Uh, a woman said, I wish to be irresistible to men, and bam, she was a 12-point buck, right? We wish for things not knowing what the result is going to be, not knowing what it is that we're asking for and what it is that we really, truly need. So here, Jesus is on his way. He's leaving Jericho. He's headed towards Jerusalem. Uh, the reading right after this is Palm Sunday. So his crucifixion is coming up fast. So he asks, what is it that you need? What do you want from me? Now, I don't know about you this morning as I got up and uh, had a, a migraine yet again. I was wishing for relief from a migraine. Were I to ask you, uh, you probably have different things in your own mind that if you were asked what one thing do you want most right now, maybe healing, maybe a, a relationship to be restored, renewed, uh, maybe uh, you're concerned about your employment, your income, uh, maybe you're uh, fearful for your children. Sometimes it seems that we are in darkness. Uh, we see no light at the end of the tunnel. And so we are like this man, Bartimaeus. He's literally in the darkness, sitting by the roadside, begging, begging for all that he needs completely dependent upon his own skills of talking people up, or so he believes, maybe looking pitiful enough, uh, relying upon those people who come by to move, his heart, move their hearts, to give him food and shelter to provide for his needs, not knowing uh, what is going to happen to him next. Uh, rarely in those days was blindness healed. They didn't have uh, all of the medicines and the surgeries and the possibilities that we have. But this blind man has something. He's received something that's a little different. He's heard, we don't know how, uh, but somehow the Holy Spirit has worked through the many crowds that are going back and forth by him on the road. And he's heard of this man, Jesus. He's maybe heard that back in chapter 8, well, he didn't have the Bible, right? But back in chapter 8, Jesus healed a blind man. And he'd like this for himself. So as the crowds are going by and people are excited, you know they were excited. Because when they enter Jerusalem, what's happening? Well, they're all in a lather. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, Bartimaeus uses a term for Jesus that isn't used anywhere else in Mark. He calls him son of David. Now, for the people of Israel, the people of God, they were expecting a Messiah to come. And they were told that this Messiah would come through the line of David. So when Bartimaeus is shouting out, Son of David, have mercy on me, he's pointing to the Messiah with his words. 
He's yelling out something that others, those with sight, cannot see. He's been enlightened by the Holy Spirit to identify the one who brings salvation, who heals the blind, restores their sight, who gives hearing to those who are deaf. He's, they've been waiting for this man to come, and here he is. As Bartimaeus is yelling out, the crowds are shushing him, right? We see this through Mark. What happened when the children were brought to Jesus? Oh, no, don't bring them here. Now Bartimaeus is trying to get his time with Jesus. No, no, be quiet. Don't, don't go over there. He's, he doesn't have time for you, Bartimaeus. But Bartimaeus knows that there's a promise that he can cash in on. He knows that this is someone who cares for him, someone who has the power to do what others cannot. When Jesus hears him, he tells the others to call him over, and he comes over to Jesus uh, and well, rather quickly, he throws off his cloak. Nothing's going to get in the way. He doesn't want to slip, trip over his cloak. He gets rid of it. He runs over to Jesus, and Jesus asks him this question. What do you want me to do for you? Now, this is the same question that Jesus has just asked James and John. And James and John, what did they want? Well, we want to sit in your glory at your left and your right. They want power from Jesus. They want control over the world, what's happening, to share that. Bartimaeus comes and he wants to see. A pretty simple request for Jesus and Jesus grants it, and as he grants it, he says to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Now, there's a great temptation for us to say, Oh, good job, Bartimaeus. You worked up some really good faith there. But we know that even faith is a gift from God. And in fact, it isn't our faith that saves us, but it's Jesus. Jesus is the one who saves us. Bartimaeus' faith is Jesus. Your faith, your Jesus has made you well, has saved you. Not just restoring his eyesight, right? Because in those days, do you know how long they lived? There's a debate, but maybe 48 years. If they survived childhood, they could expect about 48 years of life. So this man's body was going to break down again, wasn't it? Right? His eyesight was not going to last him, bring him into eternity. We're rather short-sighted, if you excuse the pun, about what it is that we need. We're so focused on this world, on this life, on our physical needs, our needs for security, for stability, for food and shelter and clothing, that when Jesus, the king, who has this great kingdom with everything in it, comes, we're like the story that Luther tells Blind beggars that come, and we ask the king for a bowl of gruel. What do you want? I'll give you anything in my kingdom. And we ask for something that will only sustain us for a little while. But Jesus doesn't give the man just what he asks for. He does give it to him, right? This man's eyesight is restored, 
And what are his eyes restored to see? Well, we're told that he follows Jesus on the way. Where's Jesus going? Jesus is going to the cross. Bartimaeus is going to see Jesus hung, crucified, tortured, and dead on the cross. How many of us would ask Jesus, Jesus, would you die for me? This is what I really want, right? This is what I really want, Jesus, is for you to die for me. We don't ask for this, do we? It wouldn't even occur to us that this is what we need more than anything else. We can make a great list of things that we need in this world, investing our time and our energy and our thoughts and our living and our relationships on this world alone, but everything in this world is in the process of being destroyed. Everything. You know this, right? How many of you have to do home maintenance, right? Constant, it's constant. Exercise, eating well, doing things, all of this. We're trying to keep ourselves going for just a little while longer. But Jesus, when he comes, well, he really doesn't ask us what it is that we want, but he gives us what we need. We need him. We need Jesus. We need to be saved. We need someone who loves us so much that no matter what we do, no matter what we say, he says, you're mine. I've claimed you. I've died for you on the cross to take away anything that would block you from coming to me. I've taken away your sin. I've died your death. I have defeated the evil one that tries to steal you away from me. We don't ask for this, do we? This isn't what we ask for. This isn't what we want, but it's so much what we need. So we have a Lord who gives us the faith in him, gives himself to us, not just makes us healthy, but makes us eternal, makes us people of faith, gives us hope, not in this world, but in the world that is to come. Now, does this mean that we don't experience anything in this world? No. How many of you have been healed? We're healed until that day where our Lord calls us home. He's with us to deliver us in this world and in the life to come. We may be focused on this world, this life, but Christ is focused on his eternity with us in his kingdom. So today we leave here and we go knowing that in Christ our faith has made us well. Amen.
I invite you, as you are able, to please rise as we declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, that the baptized would rejoice in the Sabbath rest that is theirs in the Savior, and that they would strive to enter his rest by ceasing from their own labors and resting entirely in his finished salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all ministers, that they would so handle the living and active word of God that it may not be hindered in doing its tasks of exposing the secrets of our heart and showing us our merciful and faithful high priest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who hold public office in our land, that God would strengthen and uphold them in every good deed, protect them from every evil, and prosper their service to this nation. We especially lift up our military personnel that we pray for. Jeremy Burns, Tabor Gluth, and Amanda Havemeyer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those afflicted in mind or body, spirit or soul, especially your servants, Alice Trebish, Eileen Raditz, Addie Shuby, Andy Schiller, Arlen Kettner, and the family of Clyde Schmidt, that they would be given grace to entrust themselves into the Savior's loving hands and await relief according to his good and gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all who will come to receive at this altar the ransom price of this world, the true body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, that they may welcome him with joy and partake of these sacred gifts to their everlasting blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful departed, let us give thanks and praise to Christ, asking him to bring us with them to the home he has prepared. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We will now receive our offering.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host, hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the beautiful prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
invite you to please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us, our Lord. Amen. 